Hi folks, this is just a quick how-to guide on how to take some of these maps that are available through NOAA, that are available, these bathymetric images, and be able to export a grid and import this into QGIS so that you can overlay it and then export it into whatever format you want. Whether you want to print these out so you have a hard copy or export it into a GeoTIFF so that you can import it into another tool uh, when you're out on the water like... Um, Avenza or a Gaia GPS or whatever tool that you want to use that you can import these uh, geotiffs. So let's kind of go through this real quick. First of all, this is the site. I will put it in the uh, details of the video, but this is the bathymetric data viewer that's available on NOAA's webpage. So what I'm going to do is focus on one of my home ports, which is out of Garibaldi or Tillamook, Oregon. And we're just going to look here at the area uh, outside the bar. So zooming in, let's just get an area so we have a nice view of what we want. You also now need to select the uh, BAG Color Shaded Relief. Now BAG is an acronym for Bathymetric Attributed Grid. It's basically just the bathymetric uh, data that's going to be displayed. So let's enable that and you're going to get this data overlaying on the map which is good. So what I'm going to do is get this section here and extract that. The way that you do that is on the left hand side you see where it says grid extract. You select that. Now you have to select the data set because again this map is just showing the location but there's all sorts of data that you can extract. So we're going to be very specific here. What we want is the bag mosaic. And then it says select cell size. Now what this is talking about is the resolution. So uh, as long as you don't get too crazy here on your size, we can go ahead and get uh, the best resolution, which is one, one meter. And then I need to draw a rectangle of the data I want to extract. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, and then you basically use your mouse, or if you're using a glide pad or what have you, you just uh, left mouse click, drag the area you want, and in this case I'm going to go ahead and just grab this area. And then on the left you see download data. So now it's going to go download the data. This will take a little bit. Again, this all depends on the size that you've selected. All right, now it's downloading. <clears throat> So it's downloaded. <clears throat> now in QGIS, assuming you have this downloaded, I want to cover just a few things. I like to use the hybrid Google Earth as the overlay. And you can actually install this as a XYZ tile. And these are very easy to add. If you haven't done this already, under XYZ tiles, right mouse click and you can add a new connection. I've already got it here, so I'll show you what I have. It's simply this URL here. I will put it uh, in the information section of the video, so you can just copy and paste that. But when you do this, you add this connection, you can just drag and drop this into the layers, or double click, and lo and behold, you'll get this appearing. And the reason why I like the hybrid model is because the hybrid model uh, gives us names as an overlay. So I have the street names uh, and landmarks along the shoreline. So we have that there. Okay, now we just downloaded the bathymetric image. How do you get that in here? The cool thing with QGIS is you can just drag and drop the image. So if I just bring up my download here, you'll see this is the export image that was brought here. Now all I need to do is just drag and drop this onto QGIS and look at that. Now you have this overlay. Now with regards to this in QGIS, what I like to do to make the bathymetric imagery look a little bit more useful for me, what I'd like to do is to change this layer. So. Here's the layer here, right mouse click, select properties. And under symbology, you can see that it has the 
render type single band gray. What I like to do is change this to hillshade. Okay. And now you get to see a little more texture here that is easier to see what the bottom composition looks like. Now what's really slick is that you can also import your waypoints. So if you have waypoints that's on your uh, display, like these were exported from my MFD, my, my uh, GPS, and you export them as GPX format, well guess what? You can just drag and drop these right on top of your QGIS uh, project that you have here, and then they, they will overlay. So what's nice here is I can select on uh, this information, uh, identify feature. If I click on this and I go over to the waypoint, you see I have a waypoint that was here that I imported. I can click on that and it'll come up and tell me what it is. Well, this is Dinner Reef that's outside of uh, the, the Jaws here at Garibaldi. And you can see what that reef looks like. So that's fairly useful. Uh, the other thing that I like to do and this is just a personal thing, is NOAA has the ENC charts available online and you can access those uh, over the internet and you can add these as a source. Again, I will add this, the URL specifically for this in the details section, but this is the URL here. And that way you can uh, just dynamically pull this these layers across. Now the layer I like to use is the contour line. So I'm gonna double click. All right. And now you can see that uh, there's a contour line and you can see one over here. This is um, the, the marine chart contour lines that are showing. So I just kind of like those there as a point of reference. And you'll see the faint lines here, but they're kind of hard to see. Uh, with all these overlays. So what I like to do is change the uh, characteristics or the properties of that, of those contour lines. So if you select properties, of course I've got it selected here, right mouse click. Um, now under symbology, you'll see there's, there's a bunch of settings here. This, of course the render type you can't change, but there's some things you can do here under colorize. So I'll select like a red color, um, bump up the brightness, I've even done invert colors. That seems to make it pop better. You can hit apply, hit OK, and there you go. You can kind of see them more because they're red. Now you can adjust that to your liking, but that's just what I do. So I have a point of reference with these contour lines that are uh, in the charts normally. So now I've got that. I've got this bathymetric uh, rendering that's here. So I can really see the texture It really pops out as far as this rock area. Now I can save this, I can export it as a GeoTIFF, for example, and then that way I can import it into Gaia GPS or whatever tool I wanna to use when I'm out on the water. Uh, of course, you can also uh, print these. So, you know, under project, uh, you have import export. I can export it as a PDF uh, and that way I can share it with somebody. So at any rate, hopefully this video is helpful. Uh, I'll try to put more of these out, these how-to guides. Um, please subscribe if you find these things useful, and uh, that way you can be notified uh, when uh, I get these posted. And, of course, that helps me out too. So thank you again, and we'll hopefully see you out on the water.